Okay, today we're going to talk about rational expressions and what that means and what these are. So let's start with a term. What is a term? It can be a number such as 9 could be a term just all by itself. Or the product, does anybody know what the word product means? It's what? It's the multiple, it's answer to a multiplication. So it could be a number or the product of a number and one or more variables and their exponents. So a term could be 9 or it could be 9x or it could be 9xy cubed. That's the product. All of those, uh, the number and variables right here are being multiplied. So that could make it, or even it could be um, one third x, y, z. That could be another example of one term. Okay, and then we've talked about in the past, in Math 65, we specifically talked about polynomials. A polynomial consists of one or more terms in which variable exponents are all whole numbers. And so do we remember what whole numbers are? Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Okay, that's the set of whole numbers. So all of the exponents have to be positive. They could be 0. They can't be fractions. We were just talking about rational exponents. Um, in the past. And so when we talked about whole, we, we talked about the real number system before I just got out this chart that we did in the past, we can see that the whole numbers are within the set of rationals. Okay. And then the whole numbers are all zero and then they contain the counting numbers or the natural numbers. And then a rational expression, a rational expression is an expression of, of the form P divided by Q where P and Q are polynomials. And Q cannot equal zero. Why is it that Q cannot equal zero? Well, because if we're thinking about a fraction for a minute, if I take the number zero and I divide it by 5. What is 0 divided by 5? It would be 0 because you think about it, if you have $0 and you split it with four of your closest friends, so the five of you split it up, you get $0 per person. But what if there was $5 and no one, zero people were splitting it up? How much money does each person get? We call this undefined. Anytime you're dividing by zero, that's considered undefined. Okay, so, and the reason why I bring up fractions is because what does fraction have to do with rational? What does the word rational even mean? Well, it means the opposite of irrational, right? So if we go back to our real numbers, we had two kinds of real numbers, rational and irrational numbers, right? And the rational numbers could all be written as a fraction. So at one half is a rational number, one third. When we took the square root of a number that wasn't a perfect square, we got an irrational number. But all the root word of rational is ratio. And the definition of ratio is a number, uh, oh, sorry, two numbers divided can give you a ratio. So actually it's a comparison of two numbers using division. Okay, so in the boxes below, we're going to or, or box all the expressions that are rational. So we want to look and see, is the numerator and the denominator a polynomial? And you might remember also, um, when it comes to polynomials, what are the different kinds of polynomials that we could have? We could have a... So polynomial is an umbrella term poly meaning many, but you could have a monomial. Oops, can I spell it? Monomial. A monomial would be like x squared, 9xy cubed. So monomial, what is a monomial? How many terms does it have? 
one term. Exactly. You could have a binomial. Who can give me an example of a binomial? Right? There's two terms in a binomial. And then you have a trinomial. And how many terms does a trinomial have? Three. So something like x squared plus 3x plus 2 could be a trinomial. And notice all of these have whole number exponents. What's the whole number exponent on x? What's the exponent? It would be 1, right? Here the exponent is 1. So all the exponents have to be positive and they have to be whole numbers. So if we look here, is this a polynomial divided by another polynomial? In other words, is it a rational expression? And I would say yes to that because 2 is a whole number exponent and this has an exponent of 1. So there's a whole number exponent. You also have x to the 0 power. That's a whole number. What about this one? In the numerator, we have a monomial. Well, is it really a monomial? Does it have a whole number exponent? No, because of the fraction, the rational exponent, the rational exponent means that this is not an example of a rash, uh, sorry, a rational expression. What about this one? Is this a rational expression? Ask yourself, yes, it has whole number exponents. And then finally, the last one, is this one going to be a rational ex uh, expression? No. Why do you say no? Because negative 3 is not a whole number. So that makes it not a rational expression. Okay, so now when we were talking about before this idea of dividing by zero, if we put in a number for the denominator and it would give us zero, that's going to be where the expression is undefined. So what, what number could I plug in for x and that would give me zero in the denominator because we don't want to have zero in the denominator. 7. So x cannot equal 7. But this says for what values is the rational expression undefined? Here you would say this would be the domain would be x can't equal 7. But if you were answering this question, you would say x equals 7 would make the expression undefined. How would I figure out what number is going to give me 0 in the denominator? By the way, that's what we're looking for. What value of x makes the denominator 0. That's what that question is asking. So how could I figure out what number is going to give me, is going to make the denominator 0 here? Yeah, solve. So we could set 2x minus 8 equal to 0, and then we would want to solve for x. So what would we do to solve for x? Uh-huh, 2x equals 8, divide by 2, and we get x equals 4, right? I just wrote it up above because I was running out of space. Same thing here. If you want to figure out where x is equal to 0 or what value of x will give you 0 in the denominator, you're going to do the same thing. x 3x plus 15, we're going to set it equal to 0, and then we're going to go ahead and solve. What would you do to solve? Good, and you get 3x equals negative 15, divide both sides by 3, and you get x equals negative 5. So x equals negative 5 will make that undefined. Later on when we talk about domain, you're going to say x can't equal negative 5. Why would I say that x can't equal negative 5? Because that will give me what? Yeah, the, the denominator of 0. OK, here, x squared minus 4. What do I do first? Set it equal to 0, and then add 4 to both sides. x squared equals 4. How would you solve for x there? Take the square root, and you have x equals 
Don't forget the plus or minus two. Because another way to solve that is if you set that equal to zero, you could also have factored it. That would be another way to solve it. Okay, so here x would equal positive or negative 2 is going to give you 0 because either one, if you plug that in, you would get 0 in the denominator. So you could always check that, okay? So now let's look back at these laws of exponents. These came up in the last class, in the last section, and also in the last class before this. So for any non zero real numbers, a and b, and rational numbers, m and n, so the product rule, if you have 3 to the fifth power times 3 to the eighth power, what would you do to simplify that? Yes, add the exponents. That'd be 3 to the 13th, so that means you'd have a to the m plus n. Okay, what about the quotient rule? Let's say you had 5 to the third power divided by 5 to the second power. What would you have left? What would you do with the exponents? you would subtract them. So you'd have a to the m minus n. So here you would end up getting 5, for example. Okay, what about the power rule? Let's say I had x to the third and I squared that. What would I get? Yes, so we'd have a to the m times n. The power rule, we would get x to the sixth, for example. Okay, what about the product rule, product and power rule? So for example, if I had 2x to the third and I were to take that whole thing to the third power, what would I get? Yes, x to the power rule, ninth, right? Three times three? And then that's 8x to the 9th. So we would be taking a to the nth power times b to the nth power. So basically because both of those are inside parentheses, that exponent applies to both. And then the same thing with the quotient rule. If, I have, if I'm taking a whole entire fraction, let's say I take 1 half to the third power, who can tell me what 1 half to the third power would be? It'd be actually... 1 eighth. 1 to the third power is 1, 2 to the third power is 8. So that means we're going to take a to the nth over b to the nth. Sorry, that's an n. And then what about this last one? What does the negative exponent do? So let's say I have 2 to the negative third power. What's 2 to the negative third? Isn't it 1 eighth? What does the negative exponent tell us to do? It says right here to take the reciprocal, a to the nth. What if I had also 1 over a to the negative n? What would that be? If it's the reciprocal, it'd be a to the nth. Anytime you have a negative exponent, what does the negative exponent tell you to do? 1 over 2 to the negative third, what would, be, what would that be? Eight, right? What does the negative exponent tell us to do? Take the reciprocal. Okay, let's go on to the next page. So let's think about fractions for a minute, okay? And this is basically all of these rules that we're going to be learning are basically dealing with fractions. So if I gave you the fraction 15 25ths, what would you do with that fraction? And how would you simplify it? Divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5, right? So what would you get if you reduced it? This is, would be simplifying. So you'd get what? 3 fifths, OK? So what this rule is saying, the fundamental principle of rational expressions is if you have a polynomial a, q, or sorry, not a, p, q, and r, what would happen if I had p times r over q times r? What would that reduce down to? p over q. And that's because r divided by r is 1. That same thing just happened here. You did 3 times 5 is 15 over 5 times 5 is, is 25. The 5s essentially cancel. 
That's what you're doing when you're reducing fractions. And the same thing is going to apply with rational, um, rational expressions. Now, what about this situation? If I had a minus b divided by b minus a, notice how if I wanted a, what is a minus b divided by itself? Anything divided by itself is one. The only thing different is the order here. And so if you think about factoring for a minute, if we had a minus b over, if I factor out a negative one, that's going to become a minus b. What's one divided by negative one? Negative one. So another example of this would be if I had x minus 5 over 5 minus x, notice how the only thing different about those two binomials is the signs, right? So what would this be if I divided this? It'd be negative 1, because the only thing different there is the signs. And if we factored out a negative 1, they would be an exact match, and anything divided by itself is 1. So we've actually already been doing problems like this. This is, this is a little bit of a throwback problem. If you think about it, this is 4 twelfths times x to the 10th divided by x to the 3rd times y over y to the 4th. Do you see how I can group them all like that? This is still, what is this called? Is this, what kind of polynomials are these? They're actually monomials because notice how there's no addition and subtraction. Everything's multiplied. So this is a monomial divided by a monomial. How would you reduce the fraction 4 twelfths? What does that reduce down to? 1 third. So I'm actually going to put the 3 in the denominator. I could put the 1 here, but you'll see why in a minute I don't really need the 1. In a, in a minute you'll see that. Okay, what is the 10 or x to the 10th divided by x to the 3rd? What does that reduce down to? x to the seventh, x to the seventh. Do you see where we're getting the x to the seventh from? Okay. What about the last one? Why do the, why do the, what is this y to the what? One. Why do the first, that's an implied one, divided by y to the fourth? What would you get if you simplified that? Why, I'm hearing y to the third. Does it belong in the numerator or denominator? You can answer me. You can answer. You can say it. Y to the third. It div why did why did I put it in the denominator? Why didn't I make a negative exponent? Yes, I want.